Nothing in the fitness industry polarises opinions more than CrossFit. It has been hailed as a new dawn for the fitness industry, the birth of the sport of fitness by its legion of followers. But it has also been satirised, mocked and ridiculed by the rest of the fitness industry and the media. First rule of CrossFit, always talk about CrossFit. CrossFit's not just an exercise, it's a cult, I mean way of life. But how did this polarising fitness idea become a cult-like movement that has propelled it from 15 gyms in 2005 to over 12,000 gyms and a new sport 10 years later. So today we're going to talk about how CrossFit tapped into our deepest psychological drivers to build a product that has become a cultural phenomenon and how you can leverage these same strategies to tap into your customers' deepest desires to build a cult-like following for your business or movement. First, we're going to start with the most fundamental building block of any movement. Why people join a mass movement? Because if you understand why people join one mass movement, you will understand why people join any mass movement and how you can motivate people to join your own teams and causes. Throughout history, from the Christian Crusaders, to Hitler's Nazi party, to Barack Obama's presidential campaign, people have joined mass movements to change their lives, to escape their frustrations and the sense of powerlessness they feel. This is the key to any mass movement. When creating a mass movement, the leaders must present their followers with an opportunity to escape their old lives and obtain the new life they crave. In the case of exercise, CrossFit offered people the opportunity to have the life of an athlete, to train, to eat, to compete as a team like an athlete. CrossFit offered an escape from the monotonous, isolated and cardio-filled lives most people live at the gym, where everyone just goes to the gym puts in their headphones and pounds around on a treadmill in isolation. This opportunity to have the life of an athlete was most attractive to the new poor. The people who once had the life of an athlete are competitive exercise. That is why today, CrossFit has a very large following for military personnel, emergency responders and ex-athletes. Take the example of Donald Trump's Make America Great presidential campaign. Trump built a movement offering the new poor, middle America, those who had never fully recovered from the 2008 recession, a chance to regain their old, more prosperous lives. In the case of CrossFit, CrossFit didn't just allow people to become athletes. It gave people the opportunity to adopt the life of a CrossFitter, which leads me onto the second key element of any mass movement. To become a mass movement, your movement must offer followers a new shared identity that will elevate their social status. When you join a CrossFit gym, not only are you joining a gym, you are becoming a CrossFitter and joining a tightly knit community. A sense of community that is largely absent from your typical gym. Immediately, without shedding a pound of weight, you gain the positive self-image and attributes of being a CrossFitter. Not only do you want to create a tightly knit community, you want to create a community of people that stands for something, that are fighting against the enemy for a cause that is larger than themselves. The more polarizing and anti-establishment this cause is, the better. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. I will get rid of gun-free zones on schools My first day, it gets signed, okay? In CrossFit's case, CrossFitters are fighting against the global gyms and a steady trend toward low-intensity fitness programs that get poor results by forging what they call elite fitness, a more holistic lifestyle with a large emphasis on having a more nutritious diet, mobility and functional high-intensity exercise. Anyone in the field of exercise would agree that the definition of fitness that Greg Glassman came up with is as complete as any that's ever been. So work capacity across broad time and modal domains. It's as complete as as there ever has been a definition. Fitness is your ability to perform. When we're talking about physical fitness, that means your ability to perform the given tasks using your body. 
Fitness is not just in the gym. Fitness is outside of the gym. It's life. Most people and businesses avoid being polarizing for the fear of being attacked and ridiculed. They obsess over making sure everyone likes them. But to build a successful movement, you want to be attacked and ridiculed. CrossFit was and still is being attacked by critics as diverse as medical researchers, fitness organizations, sports writers and social commentators. All this does is intensify the us versus them mentality within their community, binding them together and making everyone more passionate about your cause. But giving your audience the opportunity to a new life and to be part of a cause isn't enough to make your movement take off and take over the world. You need to present your movement as a new opportunity. The third element of building a mass movement which CrossFit executed to perfection. If CrossFit was just another class in a traditional gym, then it would never experience the success it has had and become a mass movement. It would have been seen as an incremental improvement on the existing exercise classes. This is perhaps the most important, but often the most misunderstood part of creating a mass movement. If a product or movement is seen as just an incremental improvement to what people already do, then it will never excite people enough for them to take action. Because improvement is hard. We've all tried to improve at something in our lives and have failed. We can remember the pain we felt when we tried to lose weight, to make more money, to make more friends, but have failed along the way. A new opportunity gives people the opportunity to justify their past failures, to blame them on the old flawed methods and to take action towards their goals whilst being oblivious to the setbacks they are going to face. CrossFit presented its audience a new opportunity with perfection. CrossFit gyms, or boxes as they are known, feel and look nothing like a normal gym. There are no mirrors, no machines to isolate muscles, no stationary bikes. Just an open space with a rubber floor, high ceilings and weights stacked around the perimeter. CrossFit has even invented its own language of wads, amraps and thrusters. And combined with its focus on short, high intensity workouts, where athletes are encouraged to push themselves as hard as possible and its promotion of diets like the Paleo diet, CrossFit appears completely alien to the look and feel of a normal gym, creating a very compelling new opportunity for frustrated traditional gym goers. When all three of these elements are combined together, the promise of a new life, a shared identity and community, and a new opportunity, then you have all the vital ingredients you need to build a mass movement and the ability to attract a group of followers that don't care about price. That is why CrossFit has managed to build a fanatical fan base that very few companies ever managed to achieve and charge three to four times the price of a normal gym membership, propelling CrossFit to a valuation of over $4 billion as of 2015. So for you to leverage these same strategies in your business, you need to do three things. Number one, Offer people a chance at a new life. Ask yourself, who are the new poor in your market? What life do they crave? Number two, create a strong shared identity and community for your followers, a cause that is polarizing and goes against the status quo. Ask yourself, do you and this audience share any common enemy, something you can blame for their frustrations about their lives? And number three, Package your movement as a completely new opportunity, something completely unlike what they've ever tried before. If you can do all three of these things, you will be on your way to creating a loyal fan base only a select few companies ever managed to achieve. If you want to be the first to get your hands on more strategy breakdowns, showing how you can replicate the success of history's greatest companies and leaders, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. And as this is our first ever video, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you liked, disliked and what you would like me to cover next. So until next time, see you later.